Hi guys, Chris here and I'm back looking at another portable monitor here. So this one is from Lee Powell. This is the 15.6 inch 1080p IPS 14 millimeter portable monitor that weighs just over a kilo. Now they sent this out to me free of charge in exchange for my review. A little disclaimer here that all the opinions expressed in this video are all 100% my own, like all of my videos, and that the manufacturer is not approving this video first before it's being published. I've just published this when I want myself. So this monitor, why people go for these is because, well, they're portable, they're very small, this is only 14 millimeters thick, it weighs just over a kilo, and of course it has Type-C input, HDMI, and is powered by Type-C. You can even just power it, for example, from your mobile phone charger. So in this review we'll go over what you get in the box, the build, the design, the quality of the panel itself. I'll give you a sample of the two side firing one watt speakers it has within it, and then at the end my overall opinion of the Lee Pal here 15.6 inch portable 1080p IPS monitor. So let's take a look at what we get inside the box here. We've got a power supply. Now this is a two prong one US style. It's five volts, two amps, but your typical mobile charger will actually work. Most of them out there are five volts. They're two amps as well. And that's what you need to power this monitor. So we've got a USB to type C cable, a screen protector, the screen that we'll get onto in a moment, micro HDMI to HDMI cable, and then our Type-C to Type-C cable. So the screen, it weighs just 1.13 kilos, and that's including the case that also acts as a protector for it. So I'll show you how to set up this monitor here, that it's very easy. So we've got magnets that's actually holding the case onto it. You can see it gives protection both front and back, very good. And all you need to do is just put it on a table, lift it up here, and with this in front of you, then you just push it so we've got a first position there, so this is synthetic material that they are using right here. That means that this monitor is not going to slip out. And then we do have a lower position here. And you could probably even angle that down a little bit further. About there is still actually going to work. So that's stable, it's going to sit there. Now the bezels around the outside, they aren't the slimmest that I've seen, but they're not too bad. This is an alloy, so we've got metal frame all around this IPS monitor. And this comes off as well. You can see the back of it here all made out of a lightweight alloy. There are no Visa mount points on it, as you can see, sadly. The thickness of the monitor with the case is 14 millimeters, which is not bad. And the materials used here is a synthetic leather type finish on the outside of the case, and inside is very soft and grippy. It does feel premium. It's got a good build to it. And I think it will stand the test of time as well being transported around, and it offers reasonable protection for the monitor. So for our video input here, we've got a micro HDMI port and Type-C. So if you've got a laptop that supports USB 3.1 Type-C with video out, then you can just go Type-C to Type-C. And then gaming consoles, other PCs, use the HDMI to micro HDMI cable. There's also a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack right there. And this grill, you can just see, is one on the other side, is one of two one watt speakers. And on the right, you can see the other speaker grill. We've got an input here to, of course, power this monitor. And you can use battery packs. So as long as they support five volts, two amps, which most will, then you won't have any troubles there. And you can go portable completely 100% without even needing a power jack to run the monitor. So we've got a little dial here, which also has a push in button similar to the other portable monitors I have reviewed. And that's for controlling our on-screen menu. And then we have a button below that and a status LED. So this is a matte coated IPS panel that has a resolution of 1920 by 1080 p So it's going to be perfect for looking at media content videos that are 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Now the maximum brightness is 250 nits of brightness, which is okay, but because it is matte coated, we're not going to have any problems viewing this, even with my bright studio lights on. Right now I've just got the screen set to 50% brightness, and at the 100% brightness it's really quite good actually. So you're not going to really run into any problems there, and I love the fact that it is matte coated. And if we have a look at the calibration, so out of the box here, this is the calibrated view right now, and you're probably picking up that this does have quite a bit of a blue tint to it out of the box. And that is typical of IPS panels, you do see a lot of that. Now light leakage I've noticed is also quite good on this, that I'm not seeing a lot of leakage on the edges or sides. And that is typical again with IPS panels, if you display, for example, just a black image, you might see some of that bleeding into it. But let's have a look now at the color space, the color gamut co coverage here, Adobe RGB. So uh, sRGB here of 67%, NTSC is 48% NTSC, 
Adobe RGB is just 50%. Now, I expected this. This is, after all, a cheap panel. This is a portable monitor that is going to be selling for around about 160 US, down to 109 US, so it's a very good price, but it's not going to be for professionals out there that want to color grade photos and do video work, for example. No, but for everything else, this is perfectly fine, as you'll see. So let's take a look at the on-screen display here, the controls we have. So pressing in the little button on the side, up or down on the control, we'll go through the menu right here you can see, and pressing that button there is back. So we've got settings there for the brightness, contrast, black level, and sharpness, and this is different eco modes here. Well, it says eco, but this is actually just some preset color modes that it's got. So standard, RTS, FPS, text, movie, game, and back to standard. Standard's the only one that lets you adjust yourself manually, the brightness, contrast, and those other settings that I just previously showed you. So if I get back out of this, and just quickly show you that we also have color temperature there, you can adjust the on-screen display settings. Now let's take a look at what some videos look like on this. So for a second screen for your productivity, and this is actually a 4K clip, but I've chosen this one because it has a very dark background to it. And you can see the screen, it's fine, it actually looks pretty good. So let's have a look at just another one that's a bit brighter than this. So this is a clip here I shot of some Volkswagens. Quite a few years ago now, but this is in 4K and you can see that it does look pretty good. So I have the Li Power portable monitor here connected up to my BMAX Y13. So this laptop has Type-C and I'm using the Type-C to Type-C cables. So this is using Display Out and I've set it up now as a second monitor. You could use it to just be a duplicate screen, but I prefer to have it set up like this. So you can have right here Chrome, for example, and I can move this over, be working on my website, open this up, and also then be looking at spreadsheets. So it does really help increase your productivity. Now this screen here does have touch, so I can use that one for touch, but unfortunately this monitor doesn't support touch. That would have really pushed the cost up, of course. So I've just set the volume right here on my PC to 100% and it's on 100% as well with the monitor. So they're only one watt speakers, we can't expect a lot out of them in such a thin case as well. Now they do have a little bit of bass, they sound okay, but to me they are lacking a little in volume. But here is a sample of them. So you can also use this monitor with say the Nintendo Switch, PS4, Xbox, and right now I'm using my Huawei P30 Pro here, playing Shadowgun Legends and using it as an external monitor. But I still have the touch controls on my phone as you can see, and this works out well and just makes the game a little bit more immersive on the larger screen. All right, so let me recap here with the good things and then the not so great things with this Li Pal 15.6 inch IPS monitor. So I do like the build quality. I think it is quite good. It's very good finish. There's no sharp edges or anything like that. The materials used on the case I do like. I like the fact that it only weighs 1.13 kilos. It's metal, the housing all around it. And you've got the magnets then that hold this case on. Now the inner material is the soft synthetic and that means it does actually grip the monitor well. So when I've had it positioned, even like that angle there, it hasn't slipped out and fallen down the whole time I've been using it. And I don't see that happening. So that is really good. And then of course, it's very easy just to pick this up, fold it up and put it in a bag and even set it up as well too. Just so quick and easy to do that. Now, because it only runs just off five volts and two amps, you can use your phone charger. You don't have to use the supplied one. So that means there's one thing less to travel around with as well there. Now the screen itself, let's talk a little bit about the quality of it. I like the fact that it's matte coated. It does have the typical IPS blue tint out of the box, but it doesn't have, I'm not seeing any bad bleeding around the edges or the screen there. So it seems I lucked out with a good screen. Now for professional use, this isn't ideal because it only has an Adobe 50% color gamut, the color space there. So that's not amazing, but for your general use for Using this and setting this up as a second monitor, say for a MacBook, or you're gonna use this on a, a Windows PC. And the Type-C input is great there as well for just straight Type-C to Type-C, and that's good, but it will not be powered by itself. Now, one other thing I wanted to point out too, that using with my phone that you can see right now, that when you plug it in, it's also charging my phone at the same time. So it is supporting power delivery, it seems, because the phone I've hooked up actually with a uh, quick charge 
the recharge at the moment and it seems to be just charging my phone just a little bit trickling through so that is good to see there as well so it would have been nice if it had touch the other thing i would have liked is slightly louder speakers it's good that we do have speakers so if you're going to use your nintendo switch plugged into this or say a gaming console and you don't have separate speakers then at least we do have those speakers they sound okay there's a tiny little bit of bass to them it's just they really do i feel need to be a little bit now to there. Now the on-screen menu controls, they're okay, they work fine. And then the 250 nits of maximum brightness, again, is, is adequate. It's fine because it's a matte coated screen. Ideally, we'd like to see it a little brighter, but all in all, it's not bad. So this is gonna be selling for, or sells for 169 US, which I feel is okay. But it's gonna be selling on Black Friday, they've told me, for 109. US dollars, so that is very cheap, and I feel that's quite a good deal then for a portable monitor, just over hundred dollars, and you've got of course so many uses with a monitor like this. Use it with your phone, your tablet, your laptop, and even gaming consoles there. So thank you so much for watching this review of the Li Pao 15.6 inch 1080p IPS monitor.